today we're hanging out at Bay Park Fishing Station in Oceanside, hanging out with Ashley. And Ashley's going to show us how to make a wind-on shark rig using Dacron and cable. Yep. So whenever you're ready, take us through the steps because I really like to learn this myself. All right, no problem. So we have our Dacron, which is cut about 12 feet. And it's 200 pound test. And then there's also the wire that has to go into it, which we're not going to get to yet. Because first we have to make the loop. So using a larger latch needle, which is the Cortland brand, we're going to take it and it's got to go in. You want to use about this much of a tag end on it, so about the same size as the needle. Okay. Then you kind of just want to insert it gently, slide it up about two or three inches, and then there's this end, which you want to take and go like this, latch it underneath the needle, push this up, and gently push it down through so that nothing gets stuck on it. When you do it, you want to wiggle it so that it comes over nicely. And you pull it through and you have a loop. So you basically just reverse the whole thing it looked like? Pretty much I made it inside out. Okay. Then you want to pull it down with this part, the standing end, and make it about like a two inch, three inch loop. Okay. And then you want to put this back in there so that you don't have the ability to pull it all the way out. Okay. Because if you do, then it's not going to stay. So what you want to do is put this back in twice, not once. So take the needle again, put it down in here, gently push it through. And you're going to pull the direction that the, that the Dacron is. So you're going in opposite, now you're going to pull it yeah, back, I'm gonna down, pull it back down, down that direction. Mm -hmm. So you want to go all the way up into it like right. this, as close as you can to the end of the other one. Right. You're going to take the extra end over there, gotcha. loop it back in, once again wiggle it through like this, so that it comes through nicely if I can get it through. There we go. And then it'll still be over here, but you just like pull it down. So that's like that. And gotcha. then you have a little extra left and you go in one more time. Okay. So you want to start a little lower than where the end is so that it fully goes in. Same process. Goes like this. One more time. So it's pretty simple to do this. And it's basically three times. You're just yeah. repetitious. Put it in and out the same yep. way. And then you get it through. And then you go like this, and it's in there. So and you that's go not pull it as out. hard as you want, and it won't come out. Nope. That's all. amazing. So it's basically a Chinese handcuff effect. Pretty much, yeah, the Chinese finger thing. And that's that part. And then you want to take some glue, just zap gap. And any glue will work, or you got to use this zap gap? No, you could use any glue, but, I mean, it's pretty much like a crazy glue kind of thing. Okay. So then you want to just glue it right underneath the loop, like right over here, like an inch down and then it'll dry like that. So that's the loop for the Dacron. And now that's basically going to go to the, either the mono or the... Or a or swivel, the, whatever's connected right, to the Right, using tough line, it. whatever yep. it may be. Okay. Whatever it may be, you just kind of loop it in and pull Perfect. it three times. So then there's the cable. And just so people know, this is actually going into the fishing rod, into the guides, and yeah. this will be the end. The point of uh, the shark wind on is so that you could reel it to your guides and it goes through it, so it makes it easier to leader in the shark. You actually could basically need one less person. You yeah, really need a water. It is pretty much point. one less person, so that if you have only two people on your day, one person could do the rod while the other person grabs it. So then there's this part. So the end of the cable is obviously a little thick, so you want to take one sixteenth of an inch of shrink tube, cut about like a half of inch, put it over the end so that you could splice it in without it fraying any of the Dacron. All right, because that would actually catch the Dacron. That would catch it and it would rip the whole inside of it. Okay, so then you put it on like this, just grab some sort of a torch, and you just want to like evenly go around it so that it kind of oh, wow, closes around it. Yep, <laughs> shrinks right on there. Then when you do it, you want to just like take a scissor and clean it up a little bit so that you don't have the problem of it going through the Dacron and catching the inside of it. Now would you burn that again? Nope. You want to have a little end on it. Okay. So you see it, it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you just take it and start splicing into the Dacron, which it has to be kind of like a slow process. It's not something you could do like really fast because if you do it fast, it's going to catch the inside and you're going to have to start over which is no fun, so got to kind of get it in there first. So then once you start, 
you just kind of want to keep your fingers like this, these okay. two like this, and this finger keeps the line straight so that when you're pushing it through, right. you don't have the problem. And basically you're separating the threads to make it wider, and then you're going to start inserting that cable into the Dacron. Yep. And how many feet are we looking to go? You're going all the way to the top of the loop, so you're going to want to stop kind of where it gets thick up here. Okay. And then you're going to glue over that again okay. so that when so you do talking. it, it won't go anywhere. You're talking about six, seven feet, it looks like. No, Maybe this more. is actually, this is 12 feet. Oh, it's 12 feet, wow. And then this is 15, so that three feet are going to hang out at yeah, the bottom gotcha. of it. Yeah, so then just kind of splice right through this. And you want to push it down as you go because it will get stuck if you don't. It's actually a long process to make this one rig. Yeah, very long process, which is why it takes so long. Do you want to get the other one? I could say random things during this, right? Right, it's fine. But you know, now yeah. we could put that on a side because it's going to take forever to do that. So yeah. you can actually show now. This one pretty much you just want to keep going down. So then just coil this one up and put it over there for now. Now this one that we're going to open up already has the cable all the way through. It's and you'll see about the three feet that Ashley was talking about is sticking out. Yeah. And then she'll show you what to do. Once you finish that part, she's going to take you through the steps what to do now. Yeah, so we have it all the way spliced in already. And you can see the cable, this is all rigid, you can see the cables through yeah. here already. Pretty much goes all the way up to the bottom of the loop, like where we had it before. And then, since this end is still open, it's got like the phrase over here. You're going to want to put another piece of shrink tube, which is a little thicker, so that it goes over. Now, if anybody wants this, you guys have all this product yeah, here. Yeah, we have all the product at the store, so if someone wants to try it on their own, they could come in and grab all the supplies, and we're always happy to help them start it off. So this you want to do like a half inch again, and then just kind of put it over here. See, the thing with Dacron is it frays super easy, so you want to kind of cut this off of here. Okay. So you just kind of like snip around it. It won't affect anything. kind of take some scissors and cut around it. And then, once again, put the shrink tube over it, to pull it up and then pull it down. Gotcha. And then it goes like that. So you want to hold it like this, take the torch once again, apply even heat, make sure not to burn it off, because if you burn it, it won't come out good. It makes it weaker when you do. So then, there it is, you have the shrink tube on the end. Now this will pretty much go absolutely nowhere, because it's in there so thick. But just in case it does, which it won't, the next part is to whip it with a four ounce sinker and 50 pound wax. So what you want to do is kind of take it in half. So you put like the this end to the bottom, so that this is pretty much even right about here. Okay. And then you want to whip You're it halfway. The bottom, halfway. To, the other, the yeah, the bottom to the end the, of the shrink exact, tube. Right. So the Dacron goes in half and then you want to whip it. So when whipping it, you're going to need more than one person. But you want to just put it on with a half hitch. So it goes through the sinker like that. You want to hold it on like this. And then you want to do four half hitches so that the wax is on there nice and good, which I'll do over here. <coughs> That's two. And you're always going over that tag end. Always go over the tag end gotcha. so that it stays down in there. Those are all your half hitches? These are all half hitches. It's all pretty simple. Just go over it and come back through. Okay. And then I'll be your assistant to help you with the uh, yeah. actual See, whip. See, even if you don't have the ability to whip it like this, you could do a bunch of half hitches for about two inches, and it would cause the same effect as doing it like a whip. whip. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much like this. Then you want to just cut the tag end a little so that it's not that long. Do it pretty short, actually. And then, Joey, if you'll yep. take, take one side of this. 
so I'm gonna go this way. Yeah, yeah I just don't want to hit anybody. You you could stand this way. I'll, I'll whip it this way so they see. So what do you want me to hold lower than you or higher than you? Nope, hold the same height. Okay. Just put a little tension on it, and then when you do it, you're gonna swing it clockwise. So I'm gonna go that way. And this is the whip that we're doing right now. Yes, this is it. Then you want to just kind of go like this and pretty much take it again and do half hitches all the way down. So then when you do it, it should pull down towards you. So it'll pull down and you want to do a few half hitches. But when you do it, you can wrap the sinker around twice. Then you want to wrap it around three times through. So one, two, And then three. And then you want to do just about one more. Pull it down so it comes good. And then it's hanging from there. And you just want to cut it off. And then you have your whip on there. So you could either glue over it if you don't feel safe, which you should by now because there's a lot of glue and it's pretty much like a Chinese finger trap going around it. And that's pretty much how you splice into the Dacron with the cable. This is the finished product. But then you want to add also the swivel on the other end. Do you want to take out that one? So it's this way with a little twist in between and two crimps with an offshore knot. And that's pretty much how you make a 15-foot cable wind-on. And then from here right now, what you would do is you're going to add five feet of the single strand wire, mm -hmm. where you do a haywire twist to attach it to that, yeah. and then have your shark hook and rig or whatever. And if you want, you can add a skirt to it, you to dress it up, a rattle, and it's done. And Pretty basically, much. when you're fighting that shark, this whole thing is going to go into the reel, and you're only going to have about five feet left, and it makes it much easier much for the gaffer, for everything. Gaff, Absolutely yeah. easier. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. That's pretty much how you do a wind on. And like, like we said, you know, Ashley just made it for us. You can see it's pretty intense. It's going to take a little <laughs> bit, but you could also just come right in here to Bay Park Fishing Station, him buy him. He has him here, always in stock. You can give him a call, 516-766-3110. You can speak to Ashley or yep. Mark, and everything's always available here. Yep. So thank you, Ashley. That was awesome. Not a problem. I appreciate everything you did for us today. Anytime. So now that Ashley showed us how to make the wind-on shark leader, Mark's going to show us how to do the ending part, which will consist of crimping the cable with these crimpers and he's going to put an offshore loop in the end and that will be the final part of the connection. So Mark, take us through and show us what we got to do. All right. <clears throat> we like to uh, use double crimps and it just uh, makes the connection a little more secure. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two overhand loops. One, two. And I'm going to put the swivel in the loops and we're going to work it down a little bit before we pull it all the way. Now we're going to pull it tight. And then we're going to take our first crimp. I like to use a, a double barrel copper crimp for doing this. It's uh, <clears throat> the right crimp for the cable. And so we'll do our first crimp. And then what we do is, on the second crimp, we want to keep it so the cable stays just inside the crimp. Because if you have the cable come out of the crimp, it creates a bad spot to get cut on. So we'll pull the cable so it's just inside the crimp. And we twist the other side so there's a couple twists in the cable there. So, and then we just crimp down. And now you have a clean end here. The cable is inside the, uh, inside the uh, crimp. And those twists are going to stay just by you doing that twist. And once you lock it, they don't yeah. go anywhere. They're staying. Yeah. And this virtually, would, it's impossible for this connection to pull apart. Now, I know from past experience, one time I had a leader break, and I actually used the Genkai aluminum cribs, mm -hmm. and they didn't last at all. Between this, I guess the, the metal on this wire and the aluminum, it just rotted right away to salt water, and it was over within the trip. 
So these are made of copper, you said? Yes. So you have to use these crimps Correct. for the cable. Yep, you have to use a copper crimp. Um, would you like me to do the haywire twist with sure. the, finish it off? Absolutely. So now that the, uh, the end is done of this rig, what you want to do is, this is going to be the wind on, this is going to go up into the rod and stuff, but obviously you don't want this going in the shark's mouth. This would fray up and you're going to lose your shark. So now we're going to use a single strand, I believe that's 240? Yes. That's a 240, 240 pound test. And I usually use about, I guess, a five foot section, right? Yes. Okay, so we're going to do a haywire twist and Mark's going to run you through the steps on how to do a haywire twist and how to attach it to the end of your cable rig. And the first step is uh, just put a bend in the uh, in the wire for the hook. It's about probably four inches overlap. Then we come down here tight like that. I prefer using a uh, small vice grip to hold it. And then the most important part is right here at the start. You got to twist both pieces of the single strand at the same time. A lot of mistakes that people will do is that to do an actual haywire, as you can see, Mark is twisting both wires around each other. Some people, when they do the twist, they'll just wrap one wire around it, thinking it's a haywire twist, and it's actually not. And what that do, what it, uh, it could do is it could actually slide, and you would lose your connection. So That's locked. It's not sliding. So now we have five good twists there, and now we're going to go into the roll part. So you kind of just bring the wire, and, and you get it to where it starts rolling around itself. And you do about five, four or five rolls. You don't want to go too many because if you come up like 10, it creates more of a weak point in the wire. And when you go to break the wire off, you just grab it with the vice grip, bend it on a 45, and you push it away from yourself and it breaks off nice and clean. There's no, no, nothing there to get cut on. And that's what, how your twist should look. So now we're gonna just slide a uh, skirt over the wire. It goes through nice and easy. You can just push the single strand right through the skirt. Do the same twist on the swivel here. So you don't want to get that too short. You want to give yourself uh, room to work with. So I got my start here. Vice grip. One, two, three. Five into the roll. Just push it in towards the wire and then away. And that's the end of the twist. Ready to go fishing. Also, another thing that's good with this for the wire man, although you're actually with this, you really wouldn't need one, but if you do have a wire man, this swivel actually gives the wire man something more to grab, to hold on to. So that's a little extra something to grab. And again, by doing that, what Mark showed you, that little 45 twist, there's nothing here that's gonna cut you, everything's safe, and you don't have to worry about anything.